Hi everyone, thanks for joining Fairmarch on Facebook Live. I'm Elin and part of the Fairmarch team. So as you know, Fairmarch is a marketplace for socially driven businesses and we want to build a community that connects like-minded people who share similar values and want to support these social causes. As we build this community, we have started a series of in conversations to share with everyone more about the businesses that we support and what they stand for. So today, we're pleased to have with us Ron, the co-founder of Inclusive Arts Movement. Before we begin, just wanted to let everyone know that we will have time for questions towards the later part of our session. If you have any questions at all, feel free to drop them in the comments box and we will get to them. So without further ado, I shall pass this time to Edwin. So, hello Ron, thanks for coming, thanks for joining us tonight. Can, can you tell us more about yourself? Oh sure, um, so I started an inclusive arts movement uh, that was way back in 2013. We gone on performing for a few years before we uh, decided to take a break and recently we gone back last year, we came back last year and we expanded into um, three different segments, one being performances, second being workshop and third being music video which we just launched. Um, and yeah, now now we are now we are working towards more performances in the in the uh, coming months. Um, that seems the situation gets better, right? Um, well, how I got started with this whole social enterprise, uh, I guess it's pretty much about a little story of myself, where uh, I was I'm born eighty percent there, so I think. Thing I got a little bit discriminated, you know, like things that I cannot do or, or, or being said like uh, I'm not be, being able to achieve this and that. But uh, at the end of the day, I managed to prove these people wrong. So some people say I can't play a piano, right? Some people say I can't uh, uh, earn even a single dollar. <laughs> or some people say I, I don't pronounce my words properly or okay to put it bluntly people say i can't talk lah. so um i managed to overcome this discrimination and uh what people say about me and i managed to play the piano managed to find a job <laughs> well uh because of all this i feel like i can inspire other people to do the same and i feel like the people who are in the same situation or have some other challenges involved, they can also prove to um, the public, especially uh, the differently able, which how the public uh, defines as PWDs. I believe that um, we are able to inspire them through our words. So that is why Inclusive Arts Movement was born. Oh, cool. True, we should. Our, we should work towards our dreams and we should prove to people out there that we can do the things equally well or even better than some of the people out there. So yeah, what are your views about people saying that we are PWD? Like some of the wrong discrimination or wrong stereotypes about PWDs. Mm. If you are saying how I feel about people who discriminate uh, people like us, um, I feel like there must be a certain form of understanding in both in both ends, right? So sometimes we as PWDs or differently able individuals, we might feel offended, you know, like some people they don't use the right term or they or they don't do the right things. Right, sometimes they don't know what is it that they are supposed to do or what is it like I cannot hear them, then they like get frustrated, right? And things like that. Uh I think the understanding is both ways. So as much as we are frustrated that they don't understand, they might be frustrated as well, you see. So I think as long as everybody is willing to understand each other, there is still a way to bridge the gap. Yeah, and make the society a little bit more inclusive. Uh, true, I think understanding is important yeah, so that to make our society better. So, 
Just now you say about piano career. What what got you interested in piano? Like specifically piano and not other instrument. Oh okay. Um. So actually, I was interested in playing the drums. Because I feel like the drums, it gives me a lot of like vibration. And you know, people like us, I think we we kind of, I don't know, but we kind of like the feel of vibration a lot more. I mean, for me at least. Yeah. And somehow I start to see people playing the piano and I thought it was pretty amazing. Yeah. And then I start realizing that the grand piano actually gives me a feel of like, the tone of the piano, the heavy, the heavy weighted keys, the the feel of pressing each key in a song is makes me feel like there's a lot of emotions involved. Something that I don't really usually feel in my daily life. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's just that sense of uh that sense of uh feeling feeling accomplished like. In, in Chinese, we call it manzukan, uh, satisfaction, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so we, we kind of, I kind of feel quite satisfied playing the piano. So that is why I started to to, to go inside a uh, uh, piano. Yeah, and I started to self-taught myself, self-teach myself piano and everything. So I think the journey wasn't easy. Um, when I first started, everybody said that it's horrible and all that, uh, right? So, uh, <laughs> then after that I start asking people for feedback. Hey, how what you think about the way I play? Uh? Is it okay or not? Like how come you think this part not nice? Uh how come you think this part like very messy? Or like, you know, I start asking a lot of questions here and there, then how can it be better? Or yeah, things like that. And then people are like, you have to go and practice yourself, lah. you have to go and like like experiment, right? How can we tell you everything? Blah blah. But there are things that I can't say, you know, there are things that I think is nice, but people think it's not nice. So I don't know how. Uh. So in the end, I just keep asking. Uh. Then after that, I slowly realize what is really defined as nice by other people, you know. Um, I can't really explain in detail how that happened, but in the end, I managed to. And I and the very first time I realized that I managed to was because when I sort of composed my very first song, I, I, I did my very first song during a piano concert that I was organizing back in my poly days. And then I thought that this song was horrible. I thought that it's going to, like, everybody's going to be like, boo, it sucks, it's not good, you know, like. And then I, somehow I played a song without caring about whatever people think of me on stage. I requested for a spotlight. I requested for this spotlight to shine on me so that I cannot see anybody on the audience, in the audience. So I feel like I'm just alone, just there playing for myself. <laughs> then I felt so good. So I felt like, okay, fine, do it for myself, right? I played out the whole song. At the end of the song, I was actually kind of like tearing up a little. Then suddenly everybody just stood up and clapped. So I thought that, okay, they just standing up to clap maybe because they being polite or, or, or you know, <laughs> and then they all clap everything and just like bow, walk off the stage. Then at the end of the concert, I went down and then people start coming to me and ask me for the score of the, of the song. <laughs> and then I was like, I don't write the scores. I don't write those tau gay. Like I self, I self taught myself, you know, you see, so, so I, I don't have the score. So I tell them it's all in my head. Like, I'm sorry, but I don't have the score. Yeah. And then after that, when I went home and all, then I start to realize, hey, actually, people want the score, so maybe I have done a good job. Lah. Maybe I have done a nice composition, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so basically, that's, that's what happened <laughs> for my piano journey. <laughs> yeah. Can you still remember, can you still remember that, song's name, that song's title? Eh, I didn't really like producing and put on Spotify or whatever, lah, but... It's called Bridge of Freedom. Um, it's, it's, it's the reason behind this song is actually because uh, there was this bridge, okay? There was this bridge at, in Singapore, okay? I don't want to say where. <laughs> Just make it, make it a secret, yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. It's a very nice bridge. Okay, I just don't want too many people to go there. It's really a very, very peaceful bridge. Very, very peaceful bridge. Um, 
I used to hang out there with my friend, a very good friend of mine. And we just sat there talking about life, talking about holidays. <laughs> and I think at that time, my holiday was kind of like chaotic. I had like seven CCAs and yeah, I had this like, you know, chaotic teenager. Uh, I, I don't know how to say it. It's just the period of time where you have a steep learning curve and you start realizing that there's a lot of things in life that you don't know what you're working towards to or, or being bullied and things like that, you know? So we throw, we throw everything thing on that bridge, you know, like that was the only bridge that we can voice out all our frustration, or our uh, <laughs> emotions. <laughs> it sounds really drama, but <laughs> that's what we did. That's, that's particularly what we did. We just felt really free on the bridge. That's why it's called the bridge of freedom. So there was this day that I was like talking to him about life and things like that. And, and then after that, I just took out my phone and then I played on the phone piano. The, you know, there's a piano app on the phone, I think. Yeah. So I downloaded a piano app and then I just created this melody on the on the phone. And I developed that melody into a, into a piece of song uh, as, as time passes by. So that's how it got started. Yeah. Uh, you won't really find a song anywhere because it's kind of like just a personal song of my own. I don't like really, I didn't like really focus on producing it or what yet. Maybe next time. Yeah. Wow, I think that's great. Like, you can create a song based on like your memories or based on your experiences. Maybe what does music mean to you? What's music, the meaning of yeah. music to you? Yeah, it's a very deep question <laughs> and very subjective also, <laughs> but uh, let's, let's just say that I don't know much about music, okay? I don't know much about music. So whatever I say here, please don't judge. <laughs> but music to me is just a form of expression. Expression for all the passion I have. So whatever passion, whether is it I, I recently get involved in a new job, or I recently get involved in a new relationship, or I recently get involved in a good, I found a good friend, or I lost a friend or whatsoever. I feel like music is the platform, right, to express all these things. True. In Personally, music also is a companion of my, myself. When I was down, I would also listen to music. And when I'm happy, I will also listen to music. So yeah, you say about you created inclusive arts movement. So why is it um, so? What are your like upcoming goals of for inclusive art movement? Mm. So, cause inclusive arts movement, I like I mentioned just now, we have three things that we are working towards too. Although we we started back in two thousand thirteen, we were just focusing on performance. Uh, but now, but now we are focusing on performance workshop and also music videos. Yeah. So with these three things in mind. We are branching out into, we are focusing on two key aspects, one being awareness, right? The other is being a uh, provision of uh, income for our, for the differently effort. So the awareness part is really more spreading music videos, spreading the message out to people that we should work on uh, reducing inequality, which is in fact one of the SDG goals, right? And then the other message, the other thing that we are trying to do is to do workshop performance and things like that actually. Uh, we actually engage corporates who are looking for performances or entertainment solutions, right? And corporates who wants to do videos or curate stories, you know, that aligns to their CSR. And it's really interesting. It's really interesting because they don't, we don't just create videos. We do a whole workshop for you, for your employees, for for everyone who can be involved and envelop themselves in the whole experience of inclusivity. And then after that, we will curate the whole storyline for you in the form of a video, which you can keep as a member and showcase to your audience. So moving forward, we are really just focusing on these two key aspects, letting our differently able have an opportunity to teach or to perform, right? And then of course, earn income along the way. The other is to build awareness through our music videos 
right? And then after that, to, to after building awareness, we hopefully we can expand to other countries. Um, yeah, other countries, and and then and then of course with the same market, we we expand into performance opportunities and workshops or whatever other possible collaborations that that we are currently working on. Uh, I I wouldn't say too much on that because we are still developing the idea. Yes, true. I think that's great though. Like. We are, we are trying to empower persons with disability. I think that person with disability should have equal opportunities in employment and also in showcasing their talents because they are equal. So if there is, I would always like to ask this question to someone who likes music, like what is the idol that you look out to in your music career? Uh, I don't, I don't really have one right now. Unless you're talking about like music, or you're talking about you know like. But I mean, as a social entrepreneur, uh, I pretty much, uh, how do I put it? I pretty much define my own goals and set my own expectations, and there's a reason why I want to do it, right? It's not because. I mean, there are people around me that does really amazing things, and I respect them, and I do, you know. Um, really, really admire them and things like that. But in terms of expectations, I really set my own expectations a lot because I believe I have a reason to do so. I have a reason to meet all these expectations that I set for myself. Yeah, so this is really that strength that I draw from, you know, to do the things that I'm currently doing now rather than because there's an idol or someone that I really look up to and I want to draw strength from that motivation of, you know, working towards becoming like that person or whatsoever. Uh, I honestly don't have that feeling. Yeah. Actually, it's good that you are believing in yourself and getting motivation for internal. Besides, yeah. Rather than getting motivation from other places or from somewhere else. Yeah. It's more of myself, more of my uh, beliefs. Yeah. And... Also more of what I feel should I, I should be doing, being alive in this world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, like they are saying that oh PWDs cannot cannot perform or people because they are disabled, they can't perform. So do you have any like comments? Comments or opinions yeah. towards this? Okay. Uh <laughs> I think there's a reason why I call ourselves differently, but Right. So like for me, I'm deaf, but probably I can see like my, my sense of sight might be higher, sense of touch might be higher. Yeah. Right. I believe you understand what I mean. Uh so I don't really believe in that statement. Rather I feel like uh rather than 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 saying things like that, I think they should find ways to empower. Uh, what these people can do to empower what these people can do, right? The more you empower, the more you give respect and you build the confidence of these individuals. I'm, I really quite believe they can do amazing things that you wouldn't have expect they could have done. Yeah, that's one thing. And that's one thing. The second thing is to really understand these people because they are, they are after all, very different people, right? We are, after all, very different people, like, like okay, I'm deaf, right? So I'm sometimes I cannot hear certain things, and the understanding might be slower than other people, you know. So let's say I'm out in a group of people trying to say a joke or something, right? But I don't catch the joke as quickly as how other people do, lah. You can't define that as me being slow. It's just that I don't want to announce to everybody, like, oh, I cannot hear. That's why I don't get the joke, right? <laughs> it's rather. There's a form of understanding that is that is required. Lah. And if you really see these people as your friends, and if you really respect these people, then go and find out why they are like this and understand them and you know, instead of jumping into conclusion and judging them and then after that start gossiping behind your back, things like that. It happens a lot, right? Yeah, so that's the sad truth. Uh so understanding is very important and being ready to understand is also very important because it will definitely benefit both parties. 
from what you have said that understanding is an important part of interacting with PWDs. So if so in IAM's perspective, how do you all see the talents that how do you all, how do you all find talents that you all would want to add into your team and include in your band? Actually, honestly, I'm not a school, okay? <laughs> so I don't train the talents or see the talents. Then after that, I ask them, hey, come inside. We will train you and become like a superstar. <laughs> but rather, we already capture the talents. With, we already capture the people with talents, right? And we focus on marketing them. We focus on doing a message and selling out that message to other people. So that is our focus because I don't have the expertise nor knowledge to teach or train anyone. <laughs> I mean, I'm working on the expertise to market, right? And curate content. And then after that, bring these people onto the, onto the global platform so that people are aware and they can do something better than me. Yeah. So that's what I'm aiming to achieve. Wow. That, that's good. That, that you're trying to achieve such a good objective that not a lot of people is driving. I believe in the crowd there might be people that are PWD. So what what message you can tell them to motivate them to first to persevere in their music journey? Uh, this this is a this is really a simple question. Just meet find your own expectations and meet your own expectations. Don't ever live on other people's expectations. <laughs> That's the only thing I have to say, seriously. Yeah, happiness is defined by your own expectations. It's not defined by what, not even what your mom or dad or whoever expect you to be. Just have your own expectations. You meet it and then you enjoy the journey of it. That's all. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that's what I believe in. True, like, from hearing from you, I feel like being musician, Maybe it's not that difficult. Yeah, I just need to believe in yourself. Yeah. I feel that you really, really believe in the values of understanding and belief and just be yourself. Mm. Is that... Yeah. Is it more, um, besides I am and besides yourself, what do you see yourself in the coming future? Uh, okay, that's new. <laughs> I think I'm pretty much, I'm very busy doing whatever I'm doing now, so I didn't really think of that, but yeah, thanks for asking that question because I think it's a good reminder <laughs> for myself as well. Um, definitely, I mean, being a full-time social entrepreneur and making the world a different place. That's a huge dream, you know, making the world a different place for everybody who live in harmony and inclusivity together. That's definitely what I see myself as in future. It's, it's a huge dream, yeah. That's, that's pretty much one of it. Lah. The other is really to live life with whatever I love to do. Lah. Like, uh, I like to do video editing. I like to play music. That's a definite. I like to do sports and play badminton and yeah, things like that. And I want to live life being able to do all these things while returning to returning back to society as well. Right? Yeah, but the biggest dream is still to make the world a better place. So yeah, that's, that's new. I think I have to think about it. <laughs> I think that's pretty new. <laughs> that's actually a song for that, correct? If I'm not wrong. For make the world better. Or something. Yeah. It's it's kind of hard to it's kind of hard to ask myself what I want when I've been trying to do more for other people and all I want is for other people to be happy. Yeah, so I think it's quite a selfless thing, which is something that I might need to work on, and then ask myself what are the some of the things that I really want on for my own. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's a Entrepreneur is not easy to keep yourself healthy or maybe make yourself happy sometimes. Yeah. How do you keep yourself? Um, how do you keep your work-life balance? Like since you're so busy with like social media, yeah. with your video editing. I think the key to. <laughs> 
having a good balance. I don't have the best advice for this because I honestly don't have the best balance. I'm just busy every day. But I still, uh, I still, may, I still tell myself to not forget the key elements of life. Because sometimes we tend to get too busy and we forget to, we forget to love, right? We forget to love. We forget to spend some time giving your mom a heart or make for your dad a drink, a cocktail maybe, <laughs> or even call your wife or your girlfriend. You know, just to talk to her for the next half an hour before you sleep. Um, I think these are kind of the things that are really important in life. And when I when you miss out on that, it's really a big regret. Yeah, so I think how I balance, I honestly just make sure that I have enough time for my own life, for what's important in life. Um, and then for work, I just try my best. If I have not enough time, that's not the end of the world, honestly. If I have not enough time and I make mistakes, then I just learn from it. Right? If I don't meet my if I don't meet my deadline, then it doesn't mean that I'm not working hard enough. I will work harder, but at the same time, if you think it in a smarter, if you try to think out of the box, maybe you can get uh, more people who also share the same vision as you to help. Right? Um, yeah, so these are the just kind of the things to, 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 to work around. Like, it's just how you think of certain things, I guess. I think if you want to manage your time really well, it's really, the first thing you need to manage first is really your emotions. Yeah. So if your emotions is downhill, then I think you cannot manage everything else. If work is overflowing and you're frustrated about work, you go back home, you shout at your wife and you score, you score a wife just because you are angry about work. That doesn't make any sense, right? If your relationship is not going well and then you go back to work, you also throw tantrum at your employees or you don't treat your intern well or whatsoever, right? So I think you need to strike a balance on that emotion factor. It's very important, yeah. <laughs> That's what I feel. Thanks. I think the best way to make yourself happy and keep your emotions at it is through music. Music is a good way to make yourself happy. And when you're down, you can really rely on music to keep yourself going in terms of trouble. Yeah, that's, terms one of trouble. Too. yeah. that's one too. Your hobby is something that yeah, obviously it makes you feel better, right? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. We talk, I mean, we talk a lot about your music, your, your life, and we talk about how you feel about the, how, how you feel about your life. So, one, maybe one quote, like, do you have any quote for the crowd that is here today, here tonight? Hmm. I would really re re-elaborate on finding your own expectations and meeting your own expectations. Yeah. I would really just re-elaborate on that. Uh, in fact, that quote doesn't come from me. Uh. <laughs> it doesn't come from me. <laughs> it's actually come from this, this guy that I think most of you all know. I think I will leave it to you guys to, to find out who he is. I think you all will hear about him quite a lot. Right, Jay Shetty. Yeah. So he's someone that I recently know and I feel like it really aligns to it really aligns to um what I'm really doing in life. Uh. So check out his videos. It's really great. Uh I think the things that I say really aligns to whatever I'm doing now. So so yeah. Maybe at this juncture, I can oh, yeah. ask one question. Uh-huh. Erin, is it okay? Yes, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, so uh, someone from Social Collider is asking you, Ron, do you feel that society is more inclusive throughout the years? What are your thoughts? Oh, uh, sorry, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, as a whole, I... There are there are improvements here and there. There are so many people trying hard. Right? I'm also trying hard, right? Yeah. So let me just put it straight out there first. I'm not blaming anyone for <laughs> their efforts or whatsoever, right? I'm also putting in effort, right? 
So if I'm really blaming people and saying that no, it's not making any change, then I'm also blaming myself, right? But no, that's not what I mean. I feel that the in at a whole, right, as a whole, as a society, we don't see visible changes enough to show people that hey, things are going to be different. And as a PWD or differently able, I have more confidence that things will be better. Or as a generally able individual, I have more confidence that I can make friends with this person who is deaf or blind or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Or yeah, so I don't see that confidence built between these individuals. That's how, that's how I feel like this, right? So that is why I'm also on a mission, right? To do music videos. I felt that digitally we might be able to do something different. Uh, I'm still learning, honestly. I'm still trying to find ways to reach out organically through marketing, right? And I'm talking to so many people who are involved in marketing, getting their uh, expertise on what is involved in marketing. I have dual knowledge on marketing. It's just like, I have dual knowledge on piano and then I started off playing piano. So it's the exact same thing that I'm going through. So I'm just learning and yeah, recently the, the last music video that I did, in fact, through all the learning pointers that I made to cram myself within like two weeks, honestly, it's just two weeks, everything just crammed into my head and then I just execute the video. We managed to reach a uh, 30% video engagement, uh, which is not, which honestly not bad according to my mentors and all because the average for companies will be then 10%, all right, if I'm not wrong, yeah. So I think it's not too bad. Uh, but I still have a lot to learn and I wish to do an even better music video the second time. Yeah. So I'm quite blessed. I forgot to mention I'm quite blessed to have all these people come and help me and teach me about marketing, right? And then have people support and then ultimately people watch the video, right? And 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 support and all. Oh, I feel like at the conclusion of this video is not the result of the video. This is not the result of the video. Rather, it is the learning journey that, that I have went through while doing this video. Yeah, I feel like that is the conclusion. And the gratitude, the gratitude that, that I have for everybody and everything that has been supporting me and, and, and uh, ultimately allow me to produce uh, this video. Yeah, it's not the best video, definitely, right? There's always room for improvement. So. So yeah, it's really the key thing is really a learning journey and it will be the key thing for many more videos to come. Mm. No, I agree. I think you mentioned before in an earlier discussion that um, the world has a very different definition of success. But for you, it's like as long as you are doing your best and everyone is learning from, the, from, from, from this project or from this uh, music video, that for you is good enough. Yeah, I believe so. I believe so, yeah. <laughs> Uh, we have another question. Uh, this is about, oh, okay, we're getting a bit philosophical here, but do you agree that intentions play a pivotal role in our building blocks of life? Intentions? As in yeah, like, I guess, how does intention drive action? Uh, oh, how does intention drive action? I'm, intention is quite relative to driving and pretty much any action that we do in life, right? Yeah, but I think the bigger question would be what what decides the intention, right? What is the cause of the intention? My intention is to do, play the piano. What caused me to want to play the piano? Yeah, is it because I see a pretty girl I want to play for her? <laughs> or is it because I think the piano is beautiful, I want to touch the piano and I end up learning how to play the piano? Yeah, so I think the bigger question would be what drives that intention? Uh, yeah, and that's important. Can I, can I just leave it as that? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, it, this, this is a difficult question. Okay, one more. Yeah. Uh, what, what challenges do you see as you move inclusive arts movement along? Uh, well, I, I would say uh, the current challenge now is really, of course, you know, financially, how are we going to get, to get the money and all with the current situation of course we don't have any performances going on hopefully we get more performance soon and then we can start getting the necessary you know income to not just pay our performance but to build on our efforts to expand because we have so much plans so much uh, 
we have so we have we have a structured plan. We have so much um visions and so much so much things to look forward to. But in terms of resources, financially and manpower, we are facing a challenge. Yeah, we are facing a challenge. Without any performance, we don't have any money, let alone to pay myself. I'm paying myself nothing at all now, right? I'm not even earning anything for doing this right now. But I'm still trying to find funding here and there and all. And I really appreciate the funders who have been supporting us. And I wish uh, more of you guys come and support us because we do have a bigger cost. And we want to also contribute to helping other social enterprises and other uh, society of freelancers who are also doing a good cost. Which is why I hope that my effort on getting funding, you know, can spread, um, can spread as much as possible, you know, without losing our, our objective and focus. Yep, I've gone too much into the story, I think. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, I think, yeah, let's just pass this time back to Edwin. <laughs> I think we have been bombarded you enough. There's not, there is one part that maybe you can, maybe want to, this want to elaborate further is like you talk about sustainable society. So what, what do you define? How do how can we define as a sustainable society and what should we do? What 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 do you see that what do you envision the society a society a sustainable society to be? Mm. That's a very big question with a very big job. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think it comes back to the very old saying where, uh, I don't exactly know how to say this, but you know how people always say like, if you want to throw a bunch of grass, it, will go, it goes far, right? If you throw a single piece of grass and you throw it, it won't go far. So it really takes, it really takes a society, it takes, the, it takes the whole Singapore, the whole world to do something together, right? So to get that, happening it takes uh it takes a call to action right and to get people to take the action we need to do something to tell them like you know hey there's a reason why you need to do this there's a reason why you need to accept this person there's a reason why you need to listen to me as a deaf pianist so there's a reason why you need to listen to him as a blind guitarist so there's a reason why you need to you know that that very reason of of that very reason of you know making making society inclusive, that very reason, right, it has to be inspired by someone who can do amazing things and can really tap on trend. Yeah, so it can be someone that, you know, like started Facebook, someone that started Instagram, these are the people that make things big, right? So we need more of these kind of people who are willing to make the world a better place. You know, let's not talk just about inclusivity or reducing inequality. It's, it can go into making the world a better place in terms of environmental, in terms of, right, uh, poverty, poverty, sorry, yeah. How do you, uh, what's your opinion that how music can make this world a more better place or a more inclusive place? I mean, make Singapore a more inclusive or Honestly, place? All these questions are a bit challenging for me to because it's a very big, it's, there are very big terminologies that involves a lot of people that are already on the app. So I don't, I, I will try my best to answer, but I don't have a lot of say to it. Uh, it's, music can, music can definitely help people a lot more. Personally, okay, music helps me a lot because I feel that music helps me to, to de-stress. Uh, music helps me to reduce, reduce stress, reduce worries and it's an avenue where I will look out for when I'm not feeling too great. Yeah. So I think personally, music is, is, is helping me a lot. But out there for every people, I think it's very different. I think everybody is different. Just like how there are different kinds of music, like jazz, pop, rock, metal, right? So um, it's very subjective for, for that. And it's for everybody to define for themselves. Yeah. So, Tonight, correct. There's a lot of people that come and support your yourself. What is what are some words of appreciation you want to say to them? Oh yes, of course. I would like to give appreciation and gratitude to anyone out there who have been really putting in their effort for 
um, what people term as PWDs or differently able individuals. Of course, I would like to give gratitude to people who have contributed, right, to uh, social enterprises like me or any community out there who are in need of support. And these are all very crucial areas of effort, right, that I believe uh, will bring a lot of returns to your life, right, because when you help somebody, you know that you are doing the right thing. Okay, and if you know that you are doing the right thing, you will live life without any regrets. That's what I believe. Yes. I, I, I really thank you for the inspiration section to Nalan. I believe that as long as you are still on your journey to success, you have not failed. As long as you continue to persevere, you get your dream or get your goal some, sometime. So we really thank you for joining us tonight and we hope we hope that the society will better through our common efforts. Eating, do you want to take over? Okay, no, I think uh, we don't have any more questions, but basically there's been a lot of uh, comments uh, talking about how inspired they are uh, by your vision for inclusive arts movement. Um, people are very, very amazed by your perseverance in learning the piano. And, uh, oh, actually there's one more question, sorry. Sure. Do you often link back to your intentions and visions when you face difficulties? When I face difficulty, right? Yes. Yep. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I think that's a very good question. Yeah, it's not a simple answer as yes. I think it's, it's more like how you actually come to that yes, right? How you actually really force yourself to, okay, my vision is this. So I must not feel I must not feel beaten down now. I must stand up and uh tell myself that hey, I need to, you know, be strong about this and be happy about this and be positive about this. And I have this vision that I need to meet. So I need to stand up and try again. So it's really more that challenge, you know. I believe everybody faces this challenge in life. I really believe that. And me, usually I will just spend time for myself, right? spend time for myself whatever it is go to the beach cycle go for a jog swim or play the piano or talk to someone you know or just go and buy chicken chop eat uh, feel better <laughs> or open a can of beer or, or make your own cocktail yeah, these are just some of the things that I do and I think this time allows me to draw the energy right to say yes what is my vision don't forget my vision. And because that is my vision, remember why you even started this. And then after that, go back and go back to the drawing board and start planning again. How are you going to do this? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think another well comment and question from Lily. I understand that differently abled musicians have their difficulties during the COVID-19 pandemic. Have you ever wondered if it is possible to perform online? Oh. Um, it's possible uh, with all the technology going on now. I don't want to disclose his secrets, like, you know, like those. Okay, I shouldn't say, but yeah, there is a possibility. But uh, I have to know what I'm focusing on. So some people, some musicians out there, they are focusing on live performance, right? Because that's what they always do in bars and cafes, right? So by all means, please go online. Then after that, yeah, do your recording and all. Yeah, those technology things that I won't disclose, and then go and and perform live, right? Yeah, for me, my focus is during this period, do I just want to bring my performance to go upstage and perform live? And then just, that's it. Yeah. And how much can I do performing live? How much outreach can I uh, do to performing live? And can I use this performing live thing to then uh, do something even greater in future? So all these questions all come up to my mind and then I decided not to perform live, but rather do a music video for the very key reason that I want to use this music video for my future plans, yeah, which is which, which are in the words of processing, so I won't really uh, disclose exactly. Yeah, but it involves performance, involves workshops, and involves going to other countries, and involves a couple of other stuff, yeah. Okay, uh, one, okay, really one last question. Uh, if you could decide, who would you want to collaborate with? Uh, oh, I will collaborate with almost anyone. 
let me tell you this. I go on to LinkedIn and I talk to anyone. And anyone that's interested to hear my story and I'm interested to hear their story, I just say, okay, let's go for a video call. I don't usually like say, like, I think I ambition us in future to be uh, working together like this or like that, you know. Unless that person asks, then I will ambition and, and tell that person because I respect the person's decision, right? To not waste their time and make sure there is something fruitful out of this discussion. So yes, I respect that and then I try to come up with something that can work with them. Then I propose that and then go on a meeting. But for most people, I would just say, how about we just jump into a meeting, tell each other story. Doesn't matter if we can work together or not, you know, just know each other's story. And then we, somehow there will be areas and possible collaboration or possible it's no it even need to be collaboration it can become a partner hey do you know my music video my, the person that does the music is just so it's so awesome i just met her on i just met her over lunch we didn't even talk about the the, the content of what we want to exactly talk about or what we see ourselves as in future or what. but we just shared our story and things happen and now we did the music video together because we just decided to. So I think it's, I'm pretty much open to working with anyone, talking to anyone. I am, I feel like this is really the enjoy, the enjoyment, the enjoyment process of uh, doing a business. Yeah. yeah. No, I agree. Because sometimes you just don't know where these conversations will go. And, and it's also about, yeah. um, like they, well, they say in Chinese, it's yuanfen or, or fate or connections. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it's fit. Yeah, okay, really, really one last question. It's just rolling in. Uh, who is your favorite classical musician? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't play classical music. I only, I self-taught myself piano. And if you want to know a little story when I was young, I won't mention who someone trained me on classical music uh, without going through music lesson or what. Within half a year, I was begging my mom to quit because uh, she was very strict. <laughs> so, like she takes the cane and then I'm like beside her. So I got a bit of phobia <laughs> for the classical music. But, but it's not that I don't appreciate, I'm fine with it. But I don't have any favorite classical music. I do love John Smith, the piano guys. I like how his fingers runs on the piano so amazingly, yet so inspiring, and all the audience just stand up and clap because they feel so much for the music, right? And I wish I can do that. <laughs> yeah, that's just a small uh, MV of mine. Yeah, thanks. How do you get inspired when you compose music? That's deep. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> at the start I uh, I put a lot of emotions yeah let's just put it at that I put a lot of emotions uh, so without all those emotions I wouldn't be able to even plan out or plot out that melody line yeah so my emotions comes from all sorts of places it comes from relationships I think that's where most artists, in fact, get their inspiration from anyway. Uh, uh, it comes from nature. You will be surprised. I love sitting on the mountain top. So, so one of the experiences I had was I went on a, I went on a, sorry, I went on a solo trip to Taiwan, sat on top of the mountain, and it was beautiful. There, was, there were clouds. We call it wind high, right? Uh, it's so beautiful in like the fog going around. You don't see that in Singapore, right? So I just sat there for two hours, two hours, and and I didn't have any piano with me, but I have my mobile phone. So so that's the mobile, uh, mobile piano, right? That piano app download, and then I just like created something from there. Like. That's pretty much how I do it. I don't even ask people for advice on how you can make it even better because this is really a personal thing. Like, I just like to write this melody line out of looking at the clouds and all. It's just an amazing experience. And then at that time on top of the mountain, there were months behind me, they were eating and then they just invited me to sit down in them and eat. And then they asked me to play in them, the piano, right? On, on my phone, they asked me to play a game for them, that simple melody that nobody would care in Singapore, honestly. They, if they walk past you sitting on a bridge playing that melody, they'll be just like, huh? Or, okay, walk. 
and go home, right? Yeah, but right. in Taiwan, and then the mothers, they sit behind me, they invited me to sit with them. We start talking and, and you can say anything without worrying about how people judge you. That's the best thing. Yeah. So yeah, I'm not saying anything bad about Singapore. I'm just saying that that's how it is in Taiwan, right? And I really feel, and that's how I really believe in that inspiration that allows me to make music. Yeah, I shall end it as here. Yeah. No, I think I think you brought up a really good point. I think in Singapore we tend to be too busy, just rushing through life, and we don't often stop. To admire what's around us, or have um, meaningful or just heart-to-heart -heart conversations, and it sounds like all these little things um, add to your inspiration when yeah when creating music. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I I think guys, we have we are running out of time. Thank you so much for your active participation. Um, thanks, Ron, for being with us. I am <laughs> I'm more inspired to learn music potentially. I guess one is never too late. Uh, before we end, we want to share with you a new video that was released um, by Inclusive Arts Management just on Friday. Enjoy this video um, and if you like them, uh, please follow their Facebook page. And if any questions, reach out to us. If you want to find out more about Ron, uh, get in touch. Um, yeah, you can find him on Facebook or you can reach out to us and we can redirect you. Okay, so without further ado, I shall stop talking. With our bustling city at a standstill, streets are empty and businesses are closed. When the circuit breaker was implemented, all gigs were cancelled. I thought that my musicians and I wouldn't get a chance to perform like we used to. But I was wrong. To me, it was important for the differently able to remain visible in society. There was no way we were going to cancel their performances. So we met cameras and microphones to our performers to showcase their skills right from their bedrooms. Just be a lookout, cause here I go. In a march, you go to the beat I drum. I'm not 
Thanks everyone again for joining us tonight. Um, have a great night. Have a great yeah. night. See you all soon in our next event.